All right, so this is by far the most ridiculous way I've ever recorded anything. I have never taken my microphone off of its stand and held it. This is not, you don't do that with this mic. All right, so today, we're gonna talk about Don't you hate it when you have to break your phone because there's no games worth playing on it? Wait, what? Looks like it's time to download Raid. Only a AAA quality game that fits in your pocket, has over 500 champions, millions of artifacts, making for literal trillions of ways to build your team. And yes, because I know you're all asking, you can have a full squad of old people. So why would I want that? <laughs> well, you uncultured swine. There's a ton of variety with champions and their skills, meaning that if you want a squad of old people, you can have it. And it'll probably be good or really bad. One of the best parts about Raid is its AFK system. So when you're off working insanely hard like me, Raid keeps on grinding for you. On top of all that, Raid just launched their Artifacts Forge, so now you can just craft them, as well as their entirely new advanced quest system with great rewards. But that's not all. They've also brought out a bunch of friggin' brand spanking new champions, and as we speak, they're developing the Doom Tower. So now you can go ahead and click that link in the description box below to download the game for free, and if you're a freshman Raid player, you'll get 100,000 silver and a free champion, Hexweaver. You weebs wanted an anime goth GF character? Well, now you've got one. You've got 30 days to make sure you collect your extra rewards from your inbox right here. So Fallout 76, you either love it or you hate it, but nobody can deny that it's complete downfall. It's total annihilation of any hope of becoming anything better than it's okay was its launch. So 2018. Let's talk about some games that launched that year. Uh, we had, uh, you know, that little uh, game Monster Hunter World, that sequel that not a whole lot of people were looking forward to, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, we had God of War. We had Spider-Man for the PS4, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Horizon 4, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Subnautica fully launched. These are the games that were absolutely paving the roads, and they weren't even paving the roads with tar. It was gold and diamonds and emeralds and then it emerged fallout 76 a triple a title a franchise beloved a company developing this game that has resold the same game a million times and done so successfully because it turned itself into a meme and it marketed itself now birthing the ultimate online fallout experience with Say it with me now, 16 times the detail, and because it just works. So now here we are, two years after Fallout 76 originally launched. I, I, I just don't even know where to start with this one. And that could be good, and that could be bad, depending on when you quit the game. Now I know a lot of folks are here either just to figure out if the game is worth playing, or to comment, typical YouTuber, stretching a video out to 10 minutes for that extra ad revenue. I could answer that question with one word and then look like a hero returning to my anime pillow. So yeah, that guy is partially right. I'm going to make a decently long video here, but I am going to cut the bull crap and just stick to the major points. None of that little insignificant details. And I probably will hit that 10 minute mark to get that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Gotta rotate. This is not a this is not a light microphone by any means. Let's go back to the Fallout 76 beta, the break it early test area or whatever the heck they wanted to call it. A lot of you actually haven't played since then, and look, I don't entirely blame you. You just dropped 70 bucks on this when Red Dead Redemption 2 was coming out in like a week or two. Now the big question is: has the game actually changed since the beta? In short, yes, it has but only really this year. So last year in 2019, I believe the game was still in a state of trying to figure itself out, trying to, you know, dig itself out of that hole it dug. They released this really promising roadmap and then all of the content, I mean, all of it ended up either being incredibly underwhelming, really great, but then completely forgotten or just complete broken trash, which was eventually actually taken out of the game. You know, what's funny because last year uh, there was actually a fantastic launch and it was, it was one week 
and it was Nuclear Winter. I know. Out of all the content I could talk about being great, it was the Battle Royale, but it was true. So many new players flooded into the game. So many players that either just thought it was a piece of garbage game realized that, you know, they've actually fixed a lot and it's, it's a lot better now. And it was just a lot of stupid fun. I mean, we were just dropping nukes on each other. We were using all the completely unbalanced her cards and weaponry to just obliterate these players. They had no idea what they were doing, but it was just a lot of really stupid fun. It got me away from the main game to experience a game mode with a ton of players and a smaller map instead of a few players in a map too big that you'd probably never see them. All right, let's take Elder Scrolls Online, for example. And yes, ESO is an MMO, whereas Fallout 76 is something else entirely you know you never truly feel alone in an mmo like world of warcraft guild wars eso and and you know maybe the loneliness aspect is something fallout 76 is going for but you know it's still a game meant to be played online it's a game designed to be played with other people but the only time you ever truly see other people is when you are doing events or you know there's something big going on in the game you know i've even grouped up with people in the new group system and i, I haven't even seen them once i don't even see them once i just group up with them i take the group bonus intelligence whatever and i never see them they just we all go do our own things in an online game. The game still feels like more of a solo experience rather than a get into your group and play with those other players experience, which is why I'm wondering they haven't created some form of actual single player mode where you can either just mod the heck out of or just escape those other players coming into your events, insta-killing the legendary final boss so you don't get anything, which is still a massive problem, by the way. And no, I do not count the Fallout first private worlds as some form of single player mode that you have to pay 10 bucks a month for because that's dumb now, i'm not saying the the solo feeling of this game makes it bad in any way i'm just saying that that's kind of the experience you get out of it regardless of that content wise there's a lot that's actually come to this game now although 2019 had very little to offer in terms of reason to come back to the game 2020 on the other hand single-handedly saved the game because i had reached a point where there was so little to do in this game that I was genuinely depressed having to start up the game to figure out what I was gonna do to make content because there was none. This wasn't the gold mine of opportunity that was, you know, Skyrim, Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, Oblivion. Now this was a game that when you played it through once, you would play it in as many ways as you could. Until Wastelanders came. Back in 2019, when they had announced the Battle Royale, they had also announced the better thing, which was NPCs actually coming into the game. That was supposed to come out by the end of 2019, which that didn't work so well, and it got delayed for almost seven months. But don't worry. Fallout first came to save the day. That timing could not have been worse for Bethesda or better for gaming news YouTubers. Every single man, woman, child, and their dog jumped on the opportunity to soak up the views that this hate was generating on a mass proportion. Most of these people hadn't even played since the beta. In fact, some of them were using beta footage in their videos talking about this topic. And I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. Bethesda kinda deserved that hate. They delayed the one piece of potential actual content and then Indiana Jones swapped it for some sort of ridiculous subscription. But in this case, Bethesda gets crushed by the boulder. 76 did nothing for months on end, but bug fixes, patches, quality of life improvements, but nothing too big, nothing really content wise. All in preparation for the one big update that could actually bring life to the game, literally and save any shred of reputation this game still had in the Fallout community. Even when the die-hard Fallout fans are saying, I'm not even gonna play the other games anymore because of this game, you know you've done goofed. You've done goofed real good. When it seems like the only players that you ever encounter in the game were either hackers, people using photo mode, or YouTubers like myself, you got a problem. But it doesn't matter who was playing, the game was so dead that sometimes I would join a world in a free play weekend and the game was so dead 
I thought I accidentally bought a Fallout 1st subscription and joined a private world. So then where did all that lead? How can a broken, dead, contentless, two-year-old game do anything other than lay down in the dirt? They can slap humans right into that their game. That's what they can do. And that is exactly what Fallout 76 do. It seemed like the whole gaming world, especially Bethesda fans, watched with eager eyes, and they just expected the game to do nothing else than to take one big gasp breath of air before passing on, but it didn't. So Wastelanders launched, and it was single-handedly the greatest thing to come to Fallout 76. Now that is mostly because most of the other content had been completely removed by this point. There were two massive campaign factions that were introduced, and your builds, your, your intelligence, your charisma, that stuff actually mattered in conversations. We haven't seen that kind of NPC interaction since, well, New Vegas. There were tons of interactable NPCs, enemy encounters, new locations to explore, new weapons and armor to acquire. They introduced another currency into the game. The world felt, it felt lively. It actually felt like even though you wouldn't always be coming across other players, which you were for a solid month there while Wastelanders was coming out, that seemed like the servers were finally filled, you would run into like roaming merchants, random cultists, enemy bandits, and each and every one of those encounters seemed to make this game just feel a little bit more like Fallout again. It made the game just feel playable in general. Now are you ready for the best part? The update seemed to have a very successful launch and the reviews coming in, they were positive. Even the comments on my channel, on my content, were mostly positive. Which by the way, www.kevdwood.com has everything you could ever ask for in terms of Fallout 76 stuff because that's typically what everybody is always asking for. Just letting you know. Shameless little plug right there. All the folks I ran across seemed like they were really enjoying their experience. It was really good. Minus some of the time-walled content they put in the game. Wastelanders was exactly what the game needed at this point. To just kind of put to rest the past and to move on. Now, I'm not saying that this was the most perfect, entertaining campaign. It wasn't a story more hardcore than The Last of Us. It was all right. It had solid characters, it had plot twists, it had side plots. It was pretty decent for a an online experience, especially one where you can interact with the NPCs on that kind of level. This campaign actually had some memorable moments in it. Unlike the, uh, how should I put it? bag of trash that was having to go around the whole world and collect the overseer's holotapes to learn why she is super cool. You see, I think a lot of the dedicated Fallout fans at this point had been so brutally disappointed that there was no way that Wastelanders could be a failure of a launch, but it ended up actually being really, really good. It gave a lot of reasons to actually either come back and play the game or pick it up for the first time. And I can finally and confidently say that the game was worth playing at this point. Right after the biggest update of the game's lifetime Wastelanders, they immediately rolled out Seasons, which, if you've ever played any Battle Royale games, even other games nowadays are having these, you know, these weird tiered system where you gotta work your way through it. Well, Fallout 76 released theirs, and it was free. It seemed like every single tier had actually something worth grinding for, including in-game cosmetics that you didn't have to buy through the Atom Shop. Before this, there really wasn't any reason to do any of these challenges except for Atoms, and you would barely get any Atoms. I mean, originally, if you played the game for 7,600 hours, I think they gave you like 20 atoms. I mean, they've upped that now to be fair. That is a big portion of your life you're just throwing away. It just gave reason to log in each and every day. Just quickly do your dailies. It doesn't take that long. And then get some, you know, perk packs or, you know, caps or sometimes the occasional costume. And then very shortly after seasons were introduced into the game came the greatest quality of life upgrade the game has ever seen. And that, my friends, is one wasteland. A complete overhaul and rebalance of every single weapon and enemy in the entire game for every single zone. They literally scaled everything to your level. So finally, you could go back and go to all these 
these places on the map and you can actually do stuff there. You're gonna find high level players in the used to be low level regions, which has never happened in the game. I mean, typically you get out of the vault, you kill a couple of rad roaches and you head to the cranberry bog and you drop a nuke. That's, that's how the game went. Now, the game is difficult. There's actually a level of complexity to fighting some of these enemies, no matter where you go. If you are in the forest, they're difficult. If you're in the mire, they're difficult. If you're in this place that literally still has no purpose, they're difficult. It's so nice to finally see them using the entire world instead of just sectioning it off to like, you know, low level players and high level players. And then, of course, there's an and then they added daily ops. This is probably the best end game content to have hit the game. So they had the Scorch Beast Queen, one boss fight. That is literally all the end game content that was in the entire game for the first I guess almost year and a half, two years. And then they added in Randall, the Wendigo Colossus. That was pretty good. They added an entire event based around him. I mean, those were both like, you know, you could go in there with your group, kill the guy, get the rewards, get out. But that was it. That's all you would do. But now they've got daily ops. So each and every single day, not only do you have reason to do your dailies, you can go and do the daily op, which is basically a dungeon like mission with randomized enemies that have randomized, complicated mutations to make them more difficult to fight as to which you have to actually go in with strategy. The objective part of it is a little bit repetitive. It is the same thing. Capture point A, capture point A fight the big boy, get a bunch of crappy items, never get the war glaive because you're not that lucky. And then finally, they nerfed the broken weapons. It's been so long that players have had these weapons that they should not be in the game. I mean, they're not hacked, but they're so brutally deadly that they, they might as well be hacked. They're called legacy or magic legacy, doesn't matter. They just do what they shouldn't do and they do it way too good. So finally, they've removed a ton of those weapons from the game, meaning that they've actually made the game more balanced, more difficult, higher risk, but higher reward, better end game content, NPCs, a battle pass with daily and weekly challenges to grind for, which gives you good cosmetics and cool stuff. This has been a good year for the game. I'll admit it, I was completely ready to move away from this game at the beginning of the year. It was so difficult to play a game that just didn't seem like it was going anywhere. There was no proper direction that content was constantly removed and put in and then removed again there was just no stability it seems like they've really wanted to make an effort to prove that they're not going to let this game just go to waste regardless of its past other games like sea of thieves no man's sky these games have had terrible starts to their adventures of being a game and somehow managed to redeem themselves and fallout 76 they really did that this year they've come back from one of the most atrocious beginnings I've ever seen a game launch in and made it actually something quite enjoyable and fun to play. Now, a bit of this positivity might be coming from the sheer disappointment that this game has been in the past years. I mean, this is taking a beloved franchise's name and then just, just dragging it through the mud, man. It's just dragging it. And at this point, some Fallout fans still refuse to even play the previous titles because of this one. I've been playing this game since the beta. I have seen everything and I'm not the best player out there. I'm not the most powerful. I'm not the one crunching all the numbers here, but I know this game pretty well. I've understood what it is and what it has been in the past and being able to see and enjoy everything it has become now. It's been a long two years with this game and to any devs that uh, I might have possibly offended through some of the harsh things I said about this game in the past. I hope you guys know how much I appreciate you guys taking the time to really listen to the feedback that the players have given, that to like understand that the game was not in a good place, but you did whatever it took to get it there. You guys have done such an amazing job this year. You should be so proud of yourself, you know, however much that means coming from me. So much has changed with this game. So much has been added, removed, balanced, yada yada, all that goodness. At this point, all that matters is that it seems like the game is finally moving 
in a far better direction. The thing is, you can't go into this game expecting just another Fallout game. It is entirely a different experience because there are Fallout New Vegas fans that love this game. There's Fallout 4 fans that hate it and vice versa. I really don't understand who the target audience for this game is, but for me, I've just come to enjoy it for what it is. 